I just went hands on with the next generation NVIDIA GeForce Now with RTX 5080 Gaming. And not only do I believe that this could very well be a games console killer, I believe it's coming for the traditional gaming PC as well. Let me explain. Five things that a cloud gaming service needs to do to kill a console. It needs to look super pretty. Next, you need to tackle the latency. It also needs to give you a great experience across multiple devices. You also need a games library that will continue to expand drastically over time. And last but not least, it needs decent peripheral support. So I'm gonna go through each of these individually and get a little bit nerdy on it. So picture quality. Obviously the headline feature here is RTX 5080 graphics in all the NVIDIA super pods, but that's only part of the puzzle because they've upgraded the CPU to a new AMD chipset, which sounds a little suspiciously like a 9800X 3D on paper. They've also doubled the RAM. They've also drastically improved the connectivity as well with Connect X7. And what this means is NVIDIA can now work with broadband providers like Comcast, T-Mobile, BT in the UK. NVIDIA can now work with these companies to kind of use the likes of Doxis and L4S, which means that any packages of data related to GeForce Now will get a high priority label. And it'll continue to fire it over and over and over again, and you will get the best possible bandwidth out of NVIDIA GeForce Now. And what does this mean? Well, it means up to 5K gaming at 120 frames a second on a cloud gaming service. That's bonkers. <laughs> and all of this, for example, on Indiana Jones and the Great Circle that I played here, while barely breaking 100 megabits per second. This is where the cinematic quality streaming comes in as well. So you can also get that picture in full 10-bit color with HDR. It does increase the demand on the internet connection, but it doesn't exceed 100 megabits again. You've seen what NVIDIA is doing here? They've not just thought of having a massive V8 engine at the front, they've also thought about all the pipes to optimize it perfectly. And then let's talk about the latency of it. It's always been the biggest problem with cloud gaming. I must give the disclaimer that this is based on servers that I've been testing on here in Cologne. You're getting 1080p at 360 frames a second, but that's not even the craziest part because on paper, Nvidia promises below 30 milliseconds of what they call click to photon latency. So basically when I click on a mouse to fire a gun, how quick does the monitor show me the gun firing? And while that may be true, I've seen it at 17 milliseconds. They even showed the science behind it. They had a latency tracker, piece of hardware literally stuck to a monitor. And then of course you can see the drastic difference when you play Cyberpunk 2077 side by side on a PS5 Pro to the LG NVIDIA GeForce Now app, which can run it at 4K 120 and the cloud gaming one feels more responsive than the PS5 Pro through lowering the latency by paying attention to, let's call it the plumbing of the internet connection and optimizing the flow, they are able to produce a cloud gaming service that has a quicker response time to your actions than a local console that is right in front of you in the living room. Next is compatibility across devices. As you've seen, I love GeForce Now on the Steam Deck it gives me my battery life back. Now that's getting an upgrade to 90 frames a second and faster than you can say Nintendo Switch 2, Nvidia has answered the question of what I wanted when I first tried it. They are providing 4K 120 frames per second support when you plug it into a dock connected to the TV. Next coming up is the amount of games you can play and the library ever expanding. Obviously you're getting GeForce Now Thursdays, so this library will continue to grow, but it's about to double with install to play. You will be able to install your own games on NVIDIA GeForce Now. Of course, those games have to be flagged as able to be installed, but instead of seeing the classic play button, some games you'll see install. And you can upgrade your NVIDIA GeForce account with optional amounts of cloud storage to kind of like upgrade it, boost it, bump it, 
however much you want, up to one terabyte. Obviously, this comes with an extra monthly fee, but it's good to know that whatever games you may have, you can also get access to them too. And let's talk about the last bit, which is peripheral support. Obviously, this is just the beginning of it. It's small baby steps, but they're baby steps to something that could be significant. They have added Logitech wheel support with full force feedback built into it as well. I find myself playing a lot of racing games on NVIDIA GeForce now. So to be able to plug in my Logitech wheel and be able to play the games with the wheel and pedals, that was the last bit of the puzzle to make GeForce Now more than just a plan B for if you can't get local access to your games. It makes it a potential console killer. And not only that, but with NVIDIA keeping the monthly cost of NVIDIA GeForce Now Ultimate exactly the same to get this RTX 5080 performance and maximize the bandwidth and the efficiency of the delivery of that gameplay, this could pose a threat to the traditional gaming PC as well. Obviously, I know I'm being a little bit dramatic here. Like, if I was to pick between a local gaming PC and NVIDIA GeForce Now, give me the big tower, please. But to say that you could have this service for the price that they're offering it at and have a full RTX 5080 gaming PC in the cloud whenever I want it is pretty damn sweet. But let me know in the comments if you're using NVIDIA GeForce Now Ultimate, you excited for the upgrades? If you're not, are you going to get it? I've been Jason England, this has been Tom's Guide. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the subs, hit that notification bell, and maybe I'll be back to tell you more about some games. Talk to you soon.